he he decided to I miss might that. Do this one later too, but we'll see. Which, for the record, it's not against the law for you to miss that meeting, because uh, it's just an introductory meeting. Right. But it's certainly not the best way to start a a relationship with uh, the you know the IR all the parties involved, your lawyer, the IRS's lawyer, kind of thing. Right. He, that's not the best way to be able to do it, but everybody's just like, oh, okay, yeah, Phil, you kind of screwed up here. And they're not wrong. And the other one, which made me laugh, uh, I don't know about you, because uh, I think I told you this story, but... Um, so Keemstar is getting sued by a guy named Romeo Lacoste. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't realize well, that was a nice hot bath for you. Yeah. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, of course he did. So, yeah, Keemstar is of Drama Time, who we'd never talk about. Um, he is getting sued by a guy named Romeo Lacoste. He's a, a Hollywood tattoo guy. And apparently he's he's very well known in L.A. because he's done like a lot of uh, recent celebrity tattoos and things like that. He's got a he's got a fairly big clientele. Well, but he also has a really other bad habit, and that is talking to underage girls. Right. In a sexual manner. And Keemstar has technically caught him not once, twice doing this and reported on him twice. One time he actually interviewed the guy and the interview did not go well for Romeo. So then year and I'm not kidding, like a year later, then this story pro uh, peaks up where he was talking to a girl that he knew to be 15 years old and showed his dick to her. Okay. And Keemstar got wind of it. And of course, what's Keemstar gonna do? It's gonna report be on it. And th so then at that point, Romeo decided to, because of this story, uh, his clientele started to drop off, as you might imagine. Yeah. And so at that point, he, uh, he decided to sue the guy and got probably, in my opinion, one of the most incompetent lawyers to do so. Why do I say incompetent? Oh, damn. Because this guy literally incriminated him in his opening argument. Oh, shit. Yeah, so his lawyer, who's, by the way, a veteran lawyer of like 40 years, um, he incri he basically put in, so there, he's not suing him for def defamation, I should probably point that out. He's suing him for tortious interference and uh, econo under the pretenses of economic advantage. Right. And one of the, the reasons he cites uh, the loss of clientele is that his client was having a heated conversation of a sexual nature with a woman who he or with a girl he knew to be 15 years old. That's how he worded it in the document. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it just me or do, I mean, this guy's dead, right? Dead to rights. Yeah. Like he's going to have federal marshals knocking on his door or at least state police. It's like, yeah, this was not a wise idea for you to do at all. And it, I've just been giggling at that the whole time. So you're suing Keemstar for doing his job and you decided to incriminate yourself in your own documents. <laughs> I think you should fire your lawyer. <laughs> yeah, fire your lawyer. Oh my gosh. It's, it's ridiculous that you did that. Oh, I, I'm trying to remember like the ins and outs of this one. I don't. Because we can't use stasis and magnesis at the same time. Yeah. Um. Let's see, there's not another one somewhere, is there? There might be. Oh, it's been a while. I know, the, I know this trial. I just can't remember. I couldn't remember if you had to slide the ice cube through. Yeah, but I gotta, I gotta block the fire still. Yeah. But I don't have a weight. I don't think I can skip. Is there, okay, I, I'm probably, I'm probably. Right. Wait, 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 what, what if you, what if you, um, put that on top of the, Oh, never mind. No, never mind, because no. it's going to fall. Yeah. I can't. OK, I'm smoking crack here. Is there a way for us to stop the fire? Like, can we use an ice arrow on them and then they'll temporarily stop? No, there's no okay. way. Um, let's see. If I, I think. <sighs> oh, mm -mm. oh, never mind. 
So this is not metal. I can try... Not that. I was gonna say, like, why don't you magnesis the ice cube over to the other side, but no, it's not metal. Now maybe if I do this, I... I really... Oh, 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 to the right, to the right, to the right. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's gonna bounce off the right wall. Ow! Oh. It was worth it. <laughs> that was, I'm okay, DM. I'm okay. I should have hit it a couple more times, but it worked. <laughs> oh yeah, but we didn't want it to like slam into the wall. That, that would have sucked. I bet, yeah, all you had to do is hold it above you and you go right under it. No, he figured it out. I know, I'm just saying that was how it we All right, yeah. suck it, Ice Cube. And I don't mean the rapper Ice Cube, I'm just talking about that Ice Cube. Oh yeah, there is a rapper named Ice Cube. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, he's in, like, Law & Order. Uh, for some reason, I always think that's Ice-T. Maybe that is iced tea. Yeah, that's iced tea. It's okay. been a while since I've watched Law and Order, so I, 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 you might be right. It might be Ice Cube. It might be iced tea. I don't know. I think it's iced tea. Yeah, iced tea, ice cube. Too many yeah. ices. Holy crap! So yeah, that's like the major YouTube news going around. Thankfully, like that's minor drama compared to what we've had in the past. That's kind of one of the the interesting aspects of being quarantined. Is like, you know what? Drama's not really happening. Right now, I think if it, I think if the draw if the quarantine extends into the summer, we might start to have some. <laughs> yeah, we're but that's just because of cabin fever. Yeah, people are going to be so irritated of, of seeing the same four walls. Yeah, but if we just keep it up, then maybe this whole thing will eventually die down, and then yeah. maybe we can. <laughs> that's the idea. Oh. That's and the hope, anyway. And still, nobody contaminating everybody with it oh yeah that's heat resistance oh god damn it <laughs> uh. you need cold resistance chili simmered fruit oh, i wow. didn't see any i think i used them all yeah you're gonna have to deal with it for yeah. now let's see like I'm... where's your where's your destination well i'm just trying to head towards Rito next towards uh, Tabantha, really. Oh, okay. So you're going to the Tabantha region. All yeah. right. Um, mm. Actually, you know bring down the map. Uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, zoom into the map. Okay. Like this? And mm. then bring up where you are. Well, you know, I got a shrine over here. Just second warp swing. To no, I don't want to do that one right now. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I think it might be. I'm wrong. Yeah, this is like look. the Rito area, but I think you'd be close to. Not the the one that's on your map, but the next branch that's or good. the stable. Because I think I'm Blind! getting. Let's see. I, I think, think we'll I'm getting okay, into though. into the re about the right region though. Yeah. No. You, you're you're getting close. <gasps> Let's shield, sir. Do, 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 do. I'm I'm doing the best music that I can possibly do. You know, <laughs> they gotta like strum the guitar really. Join me and we <laughs> will escape from the city. I'll make it through, <laughs> prove it to you. Follow me. Oh yeah. And now we get a copyright strike because how dare we mix Sega and Nintendo. <laughs> Follow me. Holy moly. Or one of them will send the Yakuza after us. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Konami. That's Konami. What? I don't know. It's, uh, I think there's reason to believe that both both companies have probably some ties to organized crime at some point. Nintendo's been around for 130 years. You need to tell probably. Me. I I would be more in the camp of Sega though. Well, yeah. Because I, mean, <laughs> I, I saw I saw because Sega's made a lot of mistakes, and for some reason the company doesn't die. It's true. <laughs> but I mean, Nintendo's been around for 130 years. They started off with. Uh, on a yeah, you should be really cards. close to a ranch right now. Yeah, I'm on my way, so okay. that's good. Oh crap! It's it's Alex's arch enemy, Rain. The rain. <laughs> the rain. But yeah, Nintendo started off with with playing cards, so I'm like, you mean to tell me in all this time they've never made some ties to organized crime? Crap! It's like, uh, I mean, I I can't argue. 
<laughs> I, 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 I can't argue this. Stop it. I <laughs> know. <laughs> they're, they're the cute and cuddly side of the mafia. They're like, oh, don't worry. We're just going to put you in cement shoes after you do your cameo. <laughs> but by that same token, uh, they used to have to like ship in, in Japan. They'd have to ship out the Super Famicom in the middle of the night just because if they shipped it during the day, Yakuza would hijack the trucks and steal them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that's not the only time it's happened either. They're like like big like releases Yakuza. get that. <laughs> yeah, they are. Wow. How are we talking about Yakuza right now? Because I saw a video over the weekend. No, the reason I say that is because we actually have somebody who joins our streams regularly mm -hmm. who has been pitching for us to play Yakuza for the longest time. It's like, you guys, you need to totally play, you need to totally play Yakuza because of uh, Kasuba Kiryu and Goro Majima and, all, and, and like literally like we, we get, um, and, and nothing against this person. We love you dearly, but every oh, okay. stream they are mentioning Yakuza. Almost a lot, like try and psychologically get me to go, huh, I need to play Yakuza. Ow, fuck. Come here. We finally kind of had to knuckle down and, Come on, and say like, okay, maybe Let's get out we'll of here. play it. Maybe we'll play it. I'm a little worried because everything that I've read says that Yakuza is basically GTA. And I just am not into those games anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that's me. But yes, you, we, we are you are technically right. They could both be run by the Yakuza, and maybe that's why the Konami has the connections they do now. Maybe not ran by them, but just have no. ties to them. Oh, shit. You lost your horsey. So. So? Anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, God. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting tongue tied. I don't know why. Cause I, I don't know why. Because there's moblins chasing me. I'm on a horse. I don't know where I'm going. It's all, it's all mysterious, and there's cliffs everywhere. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I saw a video over the weekend about some of... A, it's a story that from quite a few years ago, from like 30 or something years ago now, uh -huh. about a about a game developer from a certain rival company that, prob that got, probably got kidnapped by the Yakuza. Uh-huh. Or like their sister got kidnapped just so that they could get a leg into the market. I. It sounds familiar, yeah. but I don't remember the company. Yeah, I mean, nobody's really sure because nobody's actually said one wow. way or the other, but there's a lot of reason to believe Sega might have It wouldn't have been a... like the big, co I will say this at least, it wouldn't have been the big console makers because those guys are popular enough in Japan that that would be a thing. Well, keep in mind, this is still roughly the time that the Sega Master System was out. Yes, but what, the Sega what I'm saying is, if it was Nintendo, um, I think it was Sega. If it was, yeah, because if it was Nintendo, the CEO would have been known. Like that was before Iwata got brought in as president, and the other, the other one, I'm, I'm not thinking of his name off the top of my head, but um, that guy, because he was like there when they started as a playing card company, he had gotten a lot of ties. Oh yeah, Yamauchi. Yamauchi san. Uh, Yamauchi had had lots of ties, and I think even his sons who. I think one of them works for Nintendo, but one of them like has all the connections that his dad used to. Oh, no doubt. So, yeah. <laughs> hundred, like I said, 130 years. They've had a lot of time to mm -hmm. dabble in many industries. They gotta have made some time. But if you think about it, Sega probably has ties to the Yakuza because then at that point, how they ha how how would the Yakuza game look so realistic? Yeah, apparently they very are realistic. The only real thing I know about the Yakuza series is that um, a lot of the Shenmue team when uh, Shenmue 2 was done and, and um, the creator was not looking to do 3. They weren't going to give him the money for it. Right. They moved over to Yakuza. Uh, it, that's why in a lot of cases, Yakuza actually has familiar, from what I've been told, familiar mechanics with Shenmue. So, I'll take your word for it. I've never played them. That also explains why there hasn't been a Sonic game in a while. So, Well, there's, there's still talk that we'll get an, an adventure remaster. Yeah, but actually, one of the things that has surprised me, because again, we, we've had this person like constantly pushing us to play Yakuza games. Yeah. Um, it, it surprises me just how popular Yakuza is for Sega. Um, I would actually dare say uh, Yakuza, I think right now, is, is probably what's keeping Sega alive. Because uh, they've been able, they've had successful releases on pretty much from PS2 on. Uh, in Japan, at least, and then occasionally, like Sega will do another release, and that that helps keep things going even better. 
Uh, but that might be, like, that might be the equivalent of, uh, when Kanani was, like, Castlevania was on life support and was basically being supported by handheld media, like, uh, by Game Boy Dance, roughly. Mm -hmm. So that might be what's going on there. And yes, I've heard about the Adventure Remaster. I've also heard the, and I, I was wondering if you heard this, there was actually talk about rebooting or reimagining Sonic 06 for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I haven't heard anything like that. So maybe, like maybe the, not. the premise is like doing Sonic 06 right. I mean, I think it's more just a discussion that's buzzing because yeah. there's been some fan efforts to like kind of retool 06 a little bit. See, if they, if they remastered the original, I, I'd be okay with that. Um, but I, I don't think it's 06. I, I don't know if they even want to want to touch 06 after after its failure. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe to make up for past wrongs, but I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, horse. And now your horse hates you. Oh, well, he was just a means to an end. Ooh, you got a big hearty radish. Yeah. Run, horse! Run! Run, Big Blue! <laughs> Big Blue? Oh, he's blue, so... Yeah, he is get, he's like a bluish gray. I'll, I'll give you that. I will gi I'll give you that one a at the very frog. least. Oh, Blue? Um, so, so yeah, we talked about the Adventure Remaster. Did you actually... I, I was actually going to ask you, uh, we'll probably talk about this on the podcast too, but did you see the recent announcement from Nintendo? No. So, to celebrate the 35th anniversary of Mario... Oh, this, yeah. They are going to be doing a bunch of Mario games this year, and they've confirmed that some of them are new, and some of them are remasters. Oh, yes, I had heard that, actually. And so, my guess... So, the, thing I, the first thing I want to ask you is, as far as, like, new games, what do you think that they're going to do? Uh, I, I, I think Odyssey 2 might be on, the, like, not Odyssey 2, but the next major 3D Mario entry is probably on the way. Probably something like 3D World again. Three, yeah, that's the other one that I, I'm kind of wondering about is 3D World 2 on the Switch. Um, as far as remasters. Now, Andrea has made it very clear on a stream, and I'll just let her say it right now, what one of the things she wants remastered. Mario Sunshine. Yeah. You both are smoking crack. <laughs> I'm 64. Why do you so want to feel hot all the time? I don't feel hot. I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's a fun, breezy summer game. I think I in all honesty, you're going to get it because, look, the Wii U, a majority of its remakes and remasters were GameCube titles. Uh, Wind, Wind Waker Twilight Princess was based on the GameCube version. Yeah, and this was a GameCube, so they might as well at least bring it up to... Uh, mm -hmm. I use it. My aim to I, I've even said, like, as soon as we get closer to Metroid Prime 4's release date, I think you're going to see the Metroid Prime trilogy get re-released re on Switch. Well, which I, I want, because I don't want to play with, with stupid motion controls. Well, fine, Drac. If you if you don't like Sunshine because it's like a, makes you feel hot, why not a winter Mario game? Because they've done snow levels all the time. Sure. Like 64 has them. Uh, Odyssey has one. Yeah, so what? Instead, it's the Great Fairy Fountain, Charlie Brown. I'm just saying, you, you just need to take out the aesthetic of, of Mario sweating all the time, and I'll be fine. Because that's what made me feel hot. Is like he was sweating, so I was like, oh man, my body feels like it has to sweat. He was only sweating like when you carried those large ass fruits. Like in Mario 2? Oh. Is that what you're talking about? No, in Sunshine. If you like, if you like carry a fruit for, in Delfino Plaza, then he's like, uh, uh, and he's like sweating. Like oh crazy. no, like his idle animation sweats. No, he doesn't. I'm, yeah, I remember, I remember commercials even showing that. It's like, this game is so advanced, Mario sweats. <laughs> That's probably just a marketing gimmick. I bet it wasn't true. <laughs> no, I confirmed it. The, the neutral animation does sweat. It's just slower. So like you can see beads of sweat coming off of his head. <laughs> so. Why are you paying attention to that and not the game? Because it made me feel hot. <laughs> Psychologically, it made me feel hot. Um, it's a fun summertime game. Fun in I summer. think in all honesty, also Galaxy Remastered has to be considered. Meh. I, I think that could happen. I say combine the two if you could. Otherwise, it feels like it's already... Remaster 64. Like... 
Like, oh, so you're you're for remastering 64? She wasn't. Yeah. Well, I just didn't know if that was going to be plausible. But I, I mean, I, I, I mean, the, the 3DS ver or the DS version is actually like the definitive remaster. Uh, yeah, but maybe maybe it would be kind of cool to see it more. I kind of prefer one that's in a, a bit re more. remaster version, especially if you had the options of playing Wario, <laughs> Mario, or Luigi and Yoshi. Yoshi. I prefer it to be more like just OG 64. Well, it wouldn't be OG 64, it'd be remastered. I mean, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> if they'd want to do that in like the Odyssey playstyle, I wouldn't mind it. Not not like the whole possession thing, but like oh, open, open world. And you just go and, and instead of like having to assign the stars, if you could just go out and, and get them like you could the moons, then I'd be okay with that. 